I'll give you three weeks to get this show up and running. I won't let you down, sir. Better not, or I'll throw you off the roof. When Illumination Studios released Sing in 2016, all anybody could talk about was the banging music selection, the cute cuddly animals, and the original story that had everyone trying out karaoke. This time, they've done it again with Sing 2, a continuation of the beloved animation that follows some of our favorite singing humanoid characters and brings in some new faces and familiar voices for us to sing along to. I have dreamt of performing in Red Shore City since I was a little kid! The movie takes place on the entertainment capital, as Buster Moon and his team travel to Red Shore to try and take their act to the next level. The movie premiered on December 22nd and is still in theaters, wowing audiences with original performances from the multi-talented Taron Egerton, Halsey, Tori Kelly, and Scarlett Johansson, just to name a few. For an animated film, the director and writer Garth Jennings put a lot of hidden details that were easily missed on the first watch. From wild music choices to secret character references, here they are. Oh, and I'm going to issue a big spoiler alert for both Sing 1 and 2. Now let's get to it. Dream big dreams. That's what I always said, right? The film's opening sequence might seem a bit strange when you first start watching it, but as it goes on, it turns into a beautiful number greatly inspired by Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland. Though that may have escaped many of the kids watching, older audiences appreciate the topsy-turvy entry that Mina takes into the bright and flower-filled world. The choice was easy, as Mina's journey in the first movie strongly resembles the popular character. Much like Alice, Mina was bored and stuck in the old world she inhabited. She had big dreams of a different place and often wandered into her own world. For Mina, it was the same. She grew up in a place where people never really chased their dreams. Mina was very shy, but she had an amazing voice. The day she chose to showcase that is the day she entered into the topsy-turvy world of showbiz and singing. You could say she went down the rabbit hole. So having her lead this number is pretty smart and a great tribute that fairy tale lovers will appreciate. Joining her is Rosina, the singing pig with a gaggle of kids who love their mom. She plays the Cheshire Cat and you can tell by her striped outfit. Even Johnny gets in on the action as the iconic Mad Hatter. Mina carries us through the lovely world played by Tori Kelly, who gushed about the film, saying, There's so much great music tying all the storylines together, and these messages like following your dreams and not giving up. These dreams get bigger, and it's just the beginning for our favorite characters as Buster Moon, the koala who saved his theater from being shut down, reveals that he wants to take his singing stars to the big city. That's right, he and the crew are headed to Red Shore City, which is actually a parody and tribute to the entertainment hub we all know, Las Vegas. The animators went through a lot to make sure Red Shore looks like the famed city. From the sign that welcomes visitors to the large residencies that are always changing and featuring the great stars of our time, they made Red Shore a spitting image of Vegas, and it only makes the movie that much more exciting. Some kids might recognize the bright lights, but most won't understand the residencies and flashy gambling, and that's a good thing. It's in this city that a film introduced uses new characters like Portia, played by pop sensation Halsey, an egotistical rich kid and a lynx named Nushi, who is a dancing street performer voiced by Letitia Wright from Black Panther. There is a lot of fresh vocal talent, but the oldies from the first movie are back. I have a big one with Clay Calloway. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know Calloway? Including the lovely Rosita and her hilarious husband Norman. Rosita is played by Reese Witherspoon, but did you know that director Garth Jennings modeled the character after his lovely wife and how she handles their four kids? He tells the funny story, saying she's the the most extraordinary human being I've ever met. She's fabulous in every sense, he continued, speaking of their four children and saying, we were in the midst of all these children and it was chaos, and I find her coping skills remarkable. I don't understand how she does it, he adds. I don't think my wife was too thrilled when I said, yeah, I'm doing a pig, it's kind of based on you, Jennings recalls, and she's like, great, could it not be like a nice sort of gazelle or a, you know, maybe a beautiful bird? Obviously, Rosita in the movie has many, many more piglets than we have children, but the feeling's the same, that feeling of like, wow, we're overrun, we're overrun. Well, she was one of the most loved characters, and in the second movie, she has to overcome her fear of heights and stunts as the main character of the show Buster Moon is planning. Buster, where are you going? Her husband joins in on the fun, but there is one guy that only adults might recognize. Enter Darius the arrogant, self-absorbed yak, 
who can't seem to share the spotlight with Mina during their performance. Those two are meant to have a romantic moment, but Darius is too busy thinking about himself. He's played by Eric Andre. That's right, the guy from the show that's not in any way meant for kids, the Eric Andre show on Adult Swim. Eric has taken part in adult productions like Bad Trip, but he's also voiced a more child-friendly character before. He was one of the three hyenas in the Lion King remake that featured well-known stars like Beyonce and Donald Glover. Darius might be self-centered, but this next character is all about going the extra mile. Miss Crawley was one of the best characters in the first movie. It was her and her glass eye that set off the entire plot of the movie, and it seems she's back with her antics in the sequel. This time, Miss Crawley is blazing down the road in a red-hot Ferrari looking for Clay Calloway, the reclusive rock star that Buster Moon needs to perform in his stage show. This scene is wildly hilarious for two reasons. One, Miss Crawley's singing is epic. Two, she's bobbing her head to the most unlikely song out there. System of a Down's Chop Suey. The heavy metal track doesn't seem like something Miss Crawley would be listening to, but it's the unpredictable choice that makes the scene work. The song is pretty old, having been released in 2001 by the heavy metal band. The song isn't well known by younger audiences, so this one was strictly for the adults in the room, and the moment was hilarious. There's always a choice. Just never had the guts to make the right one. It no doubt had people interested in the song and ready to check it out on their various streaming platforms. Miss Crawley is played by director and writer Garth Jennings, who says she's his favorite. I could be Miss Crawley all day long. I love her, he said. Miss Crawley's surprising music choices follow a slight shift in her character. She was pretty shy in the first film, taking the back seat. In Sing 2, she's taking charge. She even orders the castmates around and yells at them, making sure they do what they have to do. The movie also has some sweet moments, including a duet between Scarlett Johansson, who plays rock star Ash, and a fellow rocker Bono, who plays Kay Calloway. They do a rendition of U2's famous single, I Still Haven't Found What I'm Looking For. The moment is really touching and it features a song that many younger audiences haven't heard before. The new cover will no doubt be featured on the soundtrack, but it might be good to check out the original. Sing 2 is still in theaters. If you're a fan of the first film, then let me know which characters are your favorite and which cover you liked most from the movie. Be sure to subscribe and switch on your notifications for more videos just like this. I'll catch you in the next one.